Hi there! Today I'm going to break down how to create this 3D audio visualizer using the program Blender. I'm going to show you step by step, but if you want to take a shortcut, you can hop onto my Gumroad using the link in the video description and download the file completely for free to get started. And then you just have to bake in your audio and you're all done. So starting from a default Blender file, we just need to change a few settings to get our program ready for an audio visualizer. I'm going to be using the render engine Cycles because then we can use a displacement map. If we change it to GPU Compute, and we change a few material settings down our material properties, we can turn on Displacement Settings, expand Surface, and change it from Bump to Displacement and Bump. This is important for using the Cycles Render Engine. Now let's go to our Render Properties again and turn down our Viewport Passes to only 50, and our Render Passes to 1000. And in your little printer icon, you can change your output properties where you're going to save your file. And we'll want to export an MP4 video, so we'll change it to FFmpeg video, and then expand our encoding, and change it from Matroska to MPEG4, so this will output an MP4 file. And then our video output quality, we want it perceptually lossless. And we'll include audio with AAC audio encoding, and we can leave the rest of the settings the same. Now let's set up our viewport panels. I'm going to right click on the timeline, create a horizontal split, and open up my shader editor. Then I'll right click again, create a vertical split, and on the left side I'm going to open up my video sequencer, and on the right I'll leave my 3D viewport. Make sure you have your first keyframe, you want to add sound into your animation. Locate your audio, and add your sound strip. Now you can see in your sound strip the length of your audio, 4980. So down in your timeline you can type in 4980. Now the animation will be the length of your song. You can hold down your scroll wheel and pan left and right in your timeline and scroll in and out. And just as a test, you should be able to hear your audio now. Now we're done with our video sequencer, we can change it over to our graph editor. The graph editor is where we will be baking in our audio and transforming our material with the sound. So this shader editor is where we can control our material and manipulate its properties. We're going to be adding a few textures in here and linking those textures to the audio using the graph editor. So our first step is to get our sphere ready for our material. We're actually going to subdivide this sphere. Let's select the object, go over to our little wrench icon, and add a modifier subdivision surface. And take up both levels to 4 for now, in your viewport and your render. So you can see we've subdivided that cube down into a sphere with a lot more surface data. Now we can create a more complex material. Down in our shader editor, let's shift A to search for a texture node, press Shift A and then S and type in noise for a noise texture, and Shift A again, search again for a wave texture. And where the magic really comes from is the displacement of these textures. So we want to Shift A, search for a displacement node. And then we can connect our displacement to our displacement. And before we go any further, if you don't have Node Wrangler enabled, it comes default with Blender, you just need to enable it. You can install it in Edit, Preferences, and type in Node Wrangler. And then hit the check mark and you can activate the add-on. So now we're using that because I can hold Alt, right click, and Lazy Connect Nodes. You can see I didn't have to click exactly on the node and connect the node. Alt, right click, Lazy Connect. So as a first example, let's change it over to rendered view, and you can already see our object is changing because of our displacement. You can see the original sphere is that orange outline, just showing that the object is selected. We feed in a texture, like the color of our wave texture, into the mid-level of our displacement. And now you can see that wave texture really starting to affect our sphere. But if you change back to regular viewport shading, you can see the sphere isn't actually being affected. The geometry is staying exactly the same, when we use Cycles Render Engine, that depth and displacement map can inform our render engine. And if you change over to your material preview, you can see that wave texture without the displacement applied. So that's another way of previewing your material. Now to see your noise texture instead of your wave texture, let's drag from the color of our noise into the mid-level, and it'll replace our wave. Now you can see what a noise texture would look like in the material preview. So for our animation, we'll be combining the noise, the wave, and a third texture. Sift data to search for a Voronoi texture. Both our Voronoi and our noise, we want to be able to manipulate with sound using 4D. When we change them to 4D, we get this W here, and this is where we can control the location of the noise. 
Let's connect together our Voronoi and our noise texture going from color of Voronoi to the vector of noise. So now this Voronoi will be feeding through our noise texture. So our Voronoi is being manipulated again by noise. If we just passed this and fed our color straight into here, a different effect. But we're actually feeding it into noise, breaking up the Voronoi and then feeding it into the height. And then our wave is going to feed into the mid-level but I'm actually going to do some math before I connect it to the mid-level. So I drag off, drop, and type in mix node. And we can plug the results of this mix node into our mid-level, and we'll be doing some mixing with another value here. So you can see we have a few textures layered, and we have our Voinoi that's broken up by noise, as well as our wave texture going around this object. So now let's start to manipulate it with a few values that represent our audio. You can shift D and search for value, and then shift D to duplicate this five times. Put one up here as well. And then start by connecting this top value to the base color of your principal BSDF. Then I'll connect this next value into the vector of my Voronoi. I'm going to connect this next value into the distortion of my noise texture. I'll put this in as A, and the wave texture as B. And this last node, we're going to plug into the vector of our wave texture. And our textures disappeared because all of these values are at zero, but these are what we're going to be keyframing to the music. So now let's bake our first audio track into the base color of our object. Have your value selected, hover over the value, and press I so you can insert a keyframe. Make sure you have keyframe zero. Then we'll go up to key and bake sound to F curves. Locate your audio. And then in these side settings, you can choose your frequency range that you want it to respond to. This will be the base color of the object that it's affecting. So I want it to only happen when the bass hits in the song. So I select the low frequency range, like zero to 300. And I also reduce my attack time and the bake sound to F curves. So you can see the audio is now affecting that F curve where before it was just a flat line now this will be moving back and forth, and sure enough, it goes from black to white when this value passes zero or negative, positive, negative. And if you were to listen to the audio and play the music, you can see that it's flashing the colors to the music. Now that we've created this F curve, we want to be able to modify it. Go on the side tab over in your modifier stack and add an envelope modifier. And when you add a control point, you can click and drag and change how that F curve is responding to the audio. Either increase it to make more chaotic or less. With the color, you want to hover it right about zero so that it flips from positive to negative, making it light, making it light and dark. Now we repeat that same step for everywhere we plugged in a value. I'll select my next value, hover over it, press I on the keyboard to insert that keyframe and then key and bake sound to F curves. This time we want to go from 300 to 800 to select a different audio range and bake sound to F curves. So you can see that this F curve appears a little bit differently since it's responding to a different audio. Again, we want a modifier, add modifier, envelope. And we want to add a control point. And this one we can make a lot more chaotic. This is going to be controlling our Voronoi texture you can make this move a lot more from positive to negative. And then repeat the same process with your other values. I, key, big sound F curves. And then go from 800 to something like 1400. Select the value in your modifiers, add envelope, and add a control point. And again, make this one a lot more from positive to negative, much more chaotic. Again, back to keyframe zero, select your value, I, key, big sound F curves, from 1400 to 5000. Select that F curve and add the envelope modifier and drag it way out with your control points. And then your last value, hover over it, I, key, big sound F curves, and then from 5000 to 10,000. So now we've plugged in all of our values. Let's modify this last F curve with an envelope modifier. Before we get any farther, remember to go and file to save your file.
Now getting the right animation is just a matter of tweaking these F curves and making them move more or less to your liking. And with this simple note setup, now you can produce a lot of different results just by disconnecting the value from your vector and plugging it to your scale instead. So as you're watching your animation happen the first few times, it'll just repeat back and forth, wiggling back and forth along your F-curve. One solution to make it look a lot more dynamic is to add a frame driver into one of your noise textures. W, type hashtag, frame, and then you can divide it by a number to slow down the action. Hashtag frame divided by 100. Here I'm going to disconnect my value from my Voronoi texture, and instead plug it into the W, and you can find a different result. Material properties are dependent on the subdivision of our sphere, so for your final render you might want to bump these up to something like 5 or 6. Now to render out the final animation I'm going to add a really simple light bath background. I'm going to shift A to add a cube, and scale it up using S and dragging, and then tab into edit mode, and I'll press 3 on the keyboard to enter face select mode. Now I can select a face and press X to delete it, delete faces. X. So now I've got a small light bath. Go over to my little wrench again to add a bevel modifier to this to round my corners. Now I've got a really simple light bath. And I'll tab to exit edit mode. And I'll shift A to add some lights. An area light. G to move it up. S to scale and click and then go to your resize and scale it along the Y axis more than the X to make it a long rectangular lamp and then G to grab. I'll press 1 to look at the project orthogonally from the front, and R to rotate. So now my light is facing my object, and I'll shift D to duplicate it, R, and face it to the object. So now we have these two lights, and in the light properties, with the light selected, you could change their color to something like green, and the power to 5000. And with this light as well, change it to something the opposite on the spectrum, like purple and 10,000. And by default your scene will come with a point light. I don't need that in the scene so I'm just going to delete that point light. But we will use this camera. I'm going to select the camera and press 0 on the keyboard so that I'm looking through it. Now I'm going to start to keyframe my camera movement throughout the animation. I'll have the camera selected. I want to add a constraint to the camera so that it tracks track to this object here. I'll select the the little eyedropper and click on my cube. So now when I move my camera around it will always be staring right at my cube. Up in my 3D viewport I'll press N on the keyboard to open up my view properties and select camera to view. Now I'll be controlling my camera everywhere I move. So I want to start right here I'm going to press I to insert a location keyframe. Then moving forward in time let's say at 600 is the start of the song. So by then I want to pivot my camera using this mouse scroll wheel and then scrolling out with the mouse and right here is where I want the camera to arrive at frame 601. So I'll press I on the keyframe for location. So now as it goes from 0 to 600 our camera is moving around as well. And you can always grab that, that keyframe, copy it, drag it with G to grab or shift D to duplicate it and your camera would stay still for a period of time. Now I'm moving forward from 600, I'll move forward some more along the animation, and pivot again using my mouse wheel. I'm going to go above the object and a bit closer, and then press I again for a location keyframe. So now our camera comes in and looks at the object closer. I'll scoot forward more in the timeline, and then rotate my view once again, press I, 
And then I want my camera to return to the same exact location. So I'm going to select this first keyframe and shift D to duplicate it. And then just bring it all the way to the end. And a tip to help you align these camera movements would be to change this over to your video sequencer. Press N to expand the view, the strip panel and display your waveform. And now you can see your audio waveform in your sound strip. Just move your timeline slider to where the bass sits, and then you know you can move this keyframe to that location. And you know your camera will be perfectly in sync with that point in the audio. Now to set up your final render, select that sphere that you've got and go back to your modifier stack and maybe increase that subdivision to your final amount that you like in your render properties. Now you're set to render. You file and save the project one more time and then render and render animation and this will output your mp4 video according to your output properties here. You could change this to a 4k render if you wanted. Change it to 3840 by 2160 and this would output a 4K image now. It'll just take longer for your computer to think through. Don't forget, you can get this file for free on my Gumroad. You can follow the link in the video description. My account, Archivoxel, on Gumroad has a few free files now, so for this animation I was using the Noisy Sphere file. You can click on this, the price is zero, just type in zero and add it to your cart. I've got a few screenshots of the project and a few notes, and you can get so when you download the free file, it'll look exactly like this. I've got the material set up and this frame around our noise. And then our values where we baked in our F curves are all hot pink nodes. So you can see there's already an F curve. You can just select the object, select the F curve and key and bake sound. So you can start right from there and just bake in your audio and go. Don't have to mess around with the nodes. I've already got them in a cool looking setup that you can use. Be sure to subscribe. I've got a variety of topics on my channel. See you in the next one.